atheism is not really a psychiatric issue, but you can see that it, it will have some relation to emotional issue as well as we keep talking. Let's uh, look to some statistics. Uh, this is Europe, more or less. Uh, as you can see, convinced atheists in 2012 and 2015, and the difference between the two. Uh, Chess Republic is very high, 30%. They are atheists. They don't believe in God. Interesting here, France in 2012 was 29%, and uh, three years later it became down to 18%. So there is hope. Uh, Germany, 15%, went up to 17%. Iceland, 14%, 2015. So just to give you an idea about, and this is um, Gallup poll. So, you know, they just call people and ask them, do you believe in God or you don't? Here in the United States, as you can see, the polling uh, 2016, uh, from 1944, 1%, 2016, it went up to 10%. Just give you a rough idea about people not believing in God. What about age? As you can see, the highest age who don't believe in God or describe themselves as atheist is 18 to 29 years old. And we, I think we notice that when uh, kids leave home and they go to college and they leave home, they go to another town, and some of them, they stop having any contact with their church or uh, going to the church where they are. They just stop completely. And um, this is just across the board. I'm not talking about all kids, but big number of kids. They have nothing to do with the church. And this is about that age, 18 to 29. Education, postgraduate degree, 5% um, describe themselves as, as atheist, and 14% they lack belief in God or gods. I will, will, will say what's the difference between the two. Uh, college graduates also is high. And then gender, the good news for the women they are half less who don't believe in any God. So men in general tend to more atheist in men. Male Americans, as you can see here, 4%. Female American, 2%. That's very good. As a matter of fact, as we keep talking, um, we'll talk about someone who became Christian after his wife converted to Christianity. So I give a hand for women. Do you? All right. <laughs> OK, household income. You know, when I started traveling as a priest, wearing this uniform uh, or vestment of the priest, uh, I used to get, um, you know, kind of welcome and smile from many people in the airport and so on. That was um, seven years ago. Now, the people who smile to me are the housekeepers in the airport. And give us an idea also about here, you see, uh, people who are doing less than 30,000 a year, and they, they believe, they self describe atheist, is only 2%. With very high income, 100,000 or more, 5%. And this explains about also how, you know, we depend more on the Lord when we are more in need in general. 
Okay, so this is just to give you an idea about statistics. Uh, even maybe some of them are a little bit old, but uh, just give an idea. 21st century, we are going through really challenging times. Um, the world denounce moral absolute and reject the truth in general. And as St. Peter mentioned in his letter, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as they were, they, as they, there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction and many will follow their destructive ways. So it's really well mentioned here, even denying the Lord who brought them. And that's what atheism is about. So it is mentioned even at the time of St. Peter, 2,000 years ago. And also St. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myth. And you know the word myth, something never been true and will never be true. So in the 21st century, we have so much immorality. 64% of adults and 83% of teenagers they will tell you moral truth depend on the situation that you are in. So there, will, there is no absolute. Yeah? Moral truth it just depends on the situation. A lot of youth believe that the idea of sin is outdated, which is very sad. It's very sad. St. Cyril of Jerusalem said something really worthwhile to remember. We cannot explain what God is, but candidly confess that we have not exact knowledge concerning him. For in what concerns God to confess our ignorance is the best knowledge. To confess our ignorance. You remember this wonderful story about a monk who was struggling with the uh, belief of the Trinity. And he was walking on the uh, seashore and he found that kid who had, uh, you know, he made a hole in the sand and he's taking his bucket to the ocean, fill it with water, come back to the hole and you know, put the water in it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then he stopped and finally asked him, what are you doing? Told him, oh, I'm trying to move the ocean to this hole. And that's exactly what we try to do sometimes. We try to move this immense uh, thoughts and power of God to this little tiny head and there is no way there is no way um, some of you heard about Helen Keller Helen, Helen Keller uh, she was born in 1880 and died in 1968 she was author political activist and lecturer she was blind deaf and couldn't talk she was born in Alabama, and, uh, and then she went through a serious illness for a year and a half that made her blind and deaf. And she has a teacher by the name of Anne Sullivan, and Anne Sullivan taught her how to communicate by someone writing with his finger or her finger on her hand. And by listening, by touching the mouth of the person talking. She can understand. I mean, amazing. 
So when she was nine years old, a minister told her about God. She smiled and communicated back to him these words, I always knew he was there. I just didn't know his name. She knew God existed even though she was blind, deaf, and couldn't talk. So the Spirit of God is, you know, is just around us. And it does affect even the blind and deaf. Uh, somebody wrote about Helen Keller saying she, in the dark, found light brighter than many ever see. She within herself found loveliness through the soul's own mastery and now the world received from her, her door, the message of the strength of inner power. And she has many writings. One of the things she said, Helen Keller, when one door of happiness closes, another opens, but often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one which has been opened for us. How true. Okay, so we will move to some nomenclature. A. In some words, when you put A before the word, it means no. Negative. You follow me? Like apnea. I'm sure you will think of so many you can help me with. Apnea is a medical term that means cessation of breathing. So apnea, apnea is to breathe. So A, apnea, no breathing. Apathy, apathy. You look somebody's face and they don't smile. You cannot read their face. There is no emotions. And that's what apathy is. Absence or suppression of emotion or excitement. A, systole. Systole is the heart contracting. So when the heart stops contracting, that's asystole, and this is lethal arrhythmia. It can, you know, unless if you do, you know, uh, uh, resuscitation or so, the person may just die. As you can see, the EKG here is flat when somebody has asystole. So the word A before some word or the letter A before some word will be negative. I think our most important question for tonight is either God exists or he doesn't. There is no in between. There is no middle ground. So the word atheist or atheism claims that God does not exist. A, no. So this means theist or theism affirms that God does exist. A theist, all of us, I hope, right? Uh, we are theists. We believe in God. Agnostic thinks there is not enough evidence to decide God is present or not. No enough evidence. That's agnostic. Skeptic doubt that God exists. So we'll focus tonight, God willing, on atheism, meaning they don't believe there is a God. And think of the fish. Anybody has a fish tank at home? You don't have any pets? Oh, you have fish tank? All right. Can your fish live without water? What will happen? So atheism is like a fish denying the existence of water. We deny or the atheism denies the existence of God. We need to examine the evidence. There is a God or there is no God. What's the evidence? And on the evidence we'll cover three things. Something called the cause argument. The other one, the design argument, and the last one, the moral argument. And then we try to answer the question, who created God? And the last question, which is very important for all of you, as you will be dealing with the lost ship, 
lost sheep, why do people reject God? And if you can really understand why this person is rejecting the idea of God's presence, you will be able to help. I will get to this. So the most important part is the last part. But in order to get to it, you have to bear with me, and we will have to go through other stages.